Watering is more important now than ever, but there's many, many different ways to water. And I'm going to show you here a range of methods that will really help you get water in your gardens to the roots of your plants. Now, the first way is rain. We all know about rain. It, it, it comes whenever it wants to, then it goes again. But have you ever thought that when rainfall comes down in torrents, how much of it stays on the surface, is not absorbed into the soil, and ends up just running away? We can capture that, and I'm going to show you ways that we can utilize on rainfall and make it go further. The next way is hand watering. Uh, no surprises, watering can. Now, watering with a watering can is a lot of fun if you have just a few small pots on a balcony or a courtyard. It can be very enjoyable. Water's heavy, and if it's a big job, this is not the way to go. The obvious method of watering with hand is by a hose. Now, I've seen countless times people get these things cranked up, they open up the jet, and they just spray water everywhere. It's on foliage, it's on branches, it's on hard surfaces so little of the water that came out will actually end up benefiting the roots of a plant. Take the pressure down, uh, change the volume, lower it, and get that water down into the soil profile. So that's a hose pipe and a watering can. The next method is uh, irrigation systems. Now this is an, uh, an older type uh, irrigation head. This would be on a frame. The water just comes out in torrents sprays everywhere. It's very indiscriminate. If you want to get a lot of water over a large area, these are very, very good. But so much of this water, if applied in the afternoon when it's hotter, will evaporate. It won't get down to the roots. So these have their place, but they're not the cure-all that we frequently use them for. Now the other method that's becoming very, very important now is drip irrigation. And for good reason. There's little holes pressed into this pipe, and rather than water coming out under high pressure, this just drips. It just drips down, immediately touches the soil, and then can be absorbed by the plant. Now these are surface mounted on your soil. Uh, sometimes they're exposed. I like to use a layer of mulch over the top of them so that they're hidden. But most importantly, the true benefit of this drip line is that this water won't evaporate. Because it's going from the pipe to the soil, and then it's going down into the soil, we get a much, much higher intake of the water that we're delivering. The one downside of drip lines is that if they get cut or nicked by a spade or a fork, uh, they'll let out a lot more water and you will end up with a very soggy, muddy patch and you won't know why. So whenever you put down drip lines, you have to be very careful to make sure that you and other people that are working on your garden know that they're there and don't get them damaged. Now here we've got our next uh, sample. Imagine this area here, this glass jar here, as a uh, a, a widely magnified soil profile. Imagine all these little particles here are tiny particles of soil. Now this is your surface. This is where you've got growing your grass, your vegetable plants, your roses or your trees. Now we can see from here up, but we don't have the ability to see the soil profile going deeper. And what I want to show you here is the ability for a, a soil profile to hold water. This is called percolation and this is what happens. You can see that no water is coming over the top of the rocks because it's able to percolate all the way down and rehydrate the entire soil profile. Now look at that. So we've just managed to put this entire jug of water into this uh, soil profile. Your soil profile this deep is a fantastic water storage device. It's able to hold water that roots can use later. Do bear in mind that this is an example of a soil profile. Um, and we are emphasizing the ability for water to run through it. So our next uh, method of getting water to the roots is what I call submersion. I've had a lot of success with this. It's incredibly effective. Frequently, very frequently, plants dry out in a nursery or a garden center setting. And when you get them home, it can be difficult to re-wet them. And many times the compost can be dry in patches. This is called hydrophobic. It's the ability for the compost to contract and it can't readily absorb new water. How often have you poured water onto a new plant just to have it drip out incredibly fast? What happens is the compost contracts, there's a little gap between the pot and the compost and the water just runs straight through. Somehow we've got to re-wet this and this is by far the best way to do it big bucket of water and it must be deeper than the depth of your pot. And you very gently want to take the plant and submerge it. Now the water level has to rise higher than the compost and rise higher by a good few inches. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to drive out all the air bubbles, all the air pockets, and recharge the root ball with water. And this is how we do it. Now all the bubbles are coming out, and of course there's an initial amount of bubbles that come out, but don't be tempted to take the pot out. Leave it in there. Every few seconds it stays in there, more and more of the bubbles are being driven out, and more and more of our water is being uh, pushed into the root ball. You can leave this in there for a minute or so for smaller containers, but as you start to get bigger, uh, bigger plants, they should be in there 5, 10, maybe even 15 minutes. but it will quickly drain. This entire root ball is now charged with water. There's no dry parts in here. Now if you've got a dry plant that hasn't been submerged and a plant that has been submerged and is now fully charged with water, which one do you think is going to grow best? So that's submersion. Our last method for applying water to the roots is what's called capillary action. Now capillary action is the movement of water against gravity. Now I've got here two panes of glass with a liquid in between, and this simulates two small particles of soil in close proximity. Now as I press the two panes of glass together, you can see the water increase. That's capillary action. It's moving up against gravity. Now how does this work for us? Why is this special? Deep in the soil, many feet below, there's uh, a body of water. If we can get that water to be sucked up through capillary action, into the rooting zone of our plants, it's free water. It costs us nothing. So this is capillary action where water will move up to our roots. Now this whole list of opportunities to get water into your garden, but let's just go over them again. We've got rainfall. Let's make sure we capitalize on that. We've got hand watering. We've got irrigation. We've got percolation, submersion, and now capillary action. These are six very, very important methods and you can use all of them in your yard and it will really help you get a soil profile that can hold water and supply it to your plants. For your garden show, this is Ian Cook.